Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The 2013 South African Joint Air Defence Symposium was held in Pretoria last week. Keith Campbell joins me to discuss some of the highlights. Hi Keith, can you give us a quick overview of the symposium? The South African Joint Air Defence Symposium takes place usually every two years. It is normally hosted by one of the three fighting arms of the South African National Defence Force on rotation. This year the host service was the South African Navy. The term joint in modern military jargon uh, means op combined operations between two or all three of the fighting arms of any country's uh, military forces. Now this year it was for the first time a three-day symposium. Previously, it had been a two-day symposium. So this year, we saw a significant expansion in the symposium in the number of papers presented uh, in the activities involved. What were some of the highlights of this year's event? Well, I think the highlight from the point of view of the South African defense industry was the explicit focus on that industry. Uh, in his opening address, uh, Rear Admiral Rusty Higgs thanked industry's participation. Uh, in her closing address, the uh, Chief of Defense Policy and Strategy, Dr. Tobekile Gamedi, uh, stressed the importance of uh, the industry in achieving uh, indigenous uh, air defense capability. In fact, both of them in both their addresses stressed the importance of South African industry in achieving an indigenous air defense uh, technology capability, technology industry uh, and products, uh, which the Defense Force sees as essential to ensuring a long term sustainable uh, air defense capability. Uh, in addition, uh, the hope is that they can develop uh, projects jointly with other countries in the Southern African development community, though uh, in addition to references to the Department of Trade and Industries Industrial Policy Action Plan, there are references to the SADC Mutual Defence Pact, which is aimed at increasing a defence cooperation between the member countries. Uh, also encouraging was that Dr. Gamedi explicitly stated that the government and the governments of SADC uh, will have to uh, put their money where their mouth is. They will actually have to fund projects. If they want projects developed in South Africa and in the region of Southern Africa, they're going to have to put budgets together and pay for these projects because industry cannot be expected to do things on their own, not in a high tech, uh, highly expensive and very specialized area like air defense. Swiss defense company Rheinmetall made a proposal to include local content. Should the South African Army decide to upgrade its anti-aircraft artillery, what did that proposal entail? Well, that was one of the interesting proposals. Obviously, we can't cover everything that was said in the symposium. But the South African Army does have a project to upgrade its anti-aircraft artillery. Uh, it's known as GBADS Phase 2. GBADS is the acronym for ground-based air defense system, what used to be called anti-aircraft. Now, their plan is to upgrade the 35 millimeter twin guns that they currently operate uh, and to acquire a modern fire control unit for these. Now, these weapons, these guns were originally acquired in the 1960s. They were from Oerlikon in Switzerland. Oerlikon is one of the ancestor companies of Rheinmetall Air Defense, which is a Swiss company itself, but part of the German Rheinmetall group. Now, uh, the, the original guns were called Mark Ones. They were later upgraded to Mark V status, and the project is to upgrade them to what's called Mark VII status and to allow them to fire advanced ammunition and to acquire a fire control unit that can provide the necessary detection, tracking information for this to work. But what Ryan Mattel was suggesting was that the Army take this a bit step, a step further by achieving what's called counter rocket and mortar capability. That is, the move from being able to shoot down aircraft to being able to shoot down missiles 
uh, and rockets and uh, mortar bombs and other ordnance. Uh, this is a capability that has developed over the past decade or so, stimulated uh, by the experiences of the United States and its allies in the occupation of Iraq, when they sought to develop systems to prevent bombardment of their bases by rockets and mortar bombs. This, in turn, was based on technologies developed for naval use to shoot down anti-ship missiles. So uh, now a number of countries have developed or are developing these systems, and Ryan Mattel's proposal was to take the South African upgrade a bit further and give uh, the Army's uh, Air Defense Artillery this CRAM capability as its acronym too. Now, this would require big technology input from Switzerland, but Ryan Mattel's pointed out that such a batch involves the guns, fire control unit, and the command post, and that the command post could be almost entirely South African in terms of technology and equipment, that there'd only need to be two control panels for the fire control unit uh, in the command post that would have to be supplied by Ryan Metal. So that was an example of a proposal for upgrading South Africa's air defense and combining existing overseas technology with South African technologies to create a system that would have uh, Admittedly, key overseas components, but also key South African components. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching, and join us again next time for more news analysis.